Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. This is Victor Campos. On our last video, we created a Twitter account. If you already had a Twitter account, you're welcome to use it. But I'm going to go through the anatomy of the Twitter screen, of the Twitter network, so that we can get acclimated to what we're looking at. When I go to twitter.com and I sign in, I am often presented with a home screen. You see at the top left, this is the home screen, the little birdhouse, the home screen. What the home screen shows is all of the tweets of the accounts that I'm following. Remember on the previous video, I followed 10 accounts related to food and drink. So whenever Alton Brown tweets, I see it. Whenever Bon Appetit tweets, I see it. Whenever Ruth Reihold tweets, I see it. I see that on the home screen. Because this is a brand new account, what I also see at the top is confirm your email address. Now, I made up this email address. I'm not going to be able to confirm it. And confirming an email gives you a few more features. So you want to do that if you've never done it. I'll have to ignore it for the moment. The home screen then also shows at the top a little box that says what's happening with a picture. This is our screen where we can tweet something. We're going to learn how to tweet a little bit later. As I've been talking, one new tweet has been published. If I click there, Alton Brown, 16 seconds ago as of this video, tweeted a photo and a hashtag. We'll talk about how to share photos. We'll talk about what hashtags are, of course. But the home screen anatomy is pretty dense because then at the left side, we've got a little bit of information about yourself. I'm Victor's Bakery. That's the full name. And I'm at Victor's Bakery 11. That simply means that if I, if you were to go to twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery 11, you would see the account I've created here. It may not last very long because I'll probably delete it by the end of this class. But that username would be, for example, PMD Interactive. That's the Twitter account of my business. So in this case here, Victor's Bakery 11 is the username and Victor's Bakery is the full name. This can be edited and we'll look at editing that later. So far I have zero tweets. I haven't interacted yet. And I am following 10 Twitter accounts. I have zero followers. There's no listing of followers. You may see a gauge about how complete your profile is. You will want to complete your profile and we'll do that a little bit later. On the left side, you may also see a trends box. These are trends. These are things that are hot at the moment on Twitter. Well, who decides what's hot? The people decide what's hot. People are tweeting about Richard Sherman, Seth Roberts, Black Friday, etc. People are tweeting about these topics. Therefore, they appear here. Some of them may be promoted, but most of these are organic. People are talking about this. And if you go off and explore, change the trend here, you'll see different trends. We'll talk about this later as a, an important aspect to get followers. On the right side, you may see who to follow. You're going to get suggestions. You'll get more suggestions the more you use Twitter. And the point of suggestions are for you to connect with accounts that may be valuable to you for your business. Always think in terms about how is this valuable for my business? Well, I don't want to see this name, so I'll close it. I don't want to see this name, so I'll close it. I'll close this name. You can spend all day long closing these things, but they're not really going to go away. So you may see live video. Twitter and more networks are getting into live video streaming. What's happening live right now? 
so I can go watch it if I'd like. There's various other screens, help, and so forth, advertise with Twitter, and then a long string that goes on and on and on and on of tweets. You probably won't get to the end, especially of accounts that are popular, that have been active for years. Remember, Twitter's been around a decade, so you're never going to run out of tweets. That's a really nice photo of Anthony Bourdain. So this is the home screen. If we look at the moments screen, moments is a curated collection of content on Twitter. This is where the Twitter team, based on various factors, decides what's important today on Twitter. So yours may change by the time you log in. We have various subtopics that may change for different people at different times. Under the fun moments, these are things that are happening that are fun on Twitter. Well, why do we matter? Why, why, do, why do we care? Why does this matter for, um, for your business? We'll see on, an, on another video. Notifications. This is one of the most important screens on Twitter. This is where you keep up to date with what's happening with your business on Twitter. If someone follows you on Twitter, you'll get a notification. If someone replies to you on Twitter, you get a notification. If someone likes your picture, you get a notification. It's very important to keep up to date with what's happening on Twitter because, again, you're going to run your social media, be it Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, etc., as a dialogue. You want to keep up to date with people interacting with you. It could be a simple thank you reply to someone's message. It could be a more complex link to a product that you're selling based on a previous reply. So we'll look at notifications in more detail later. Everyone's got this screen. This is what I said earlier on the first video, that if you follow an account, they get a notification. They are made aware that you exist. And we'll talk about strategies to get followers later and why the notification screen is so important. The messages screen is the direct messages talk privately section. You are able to have private conversations on Twitter. The default setting for Twitter is that everything you post on Twitter is public. Anyone anywhere on Twitter could find it. Anyone anywhere on a regular search, like a Google search, a Yahoo search, a Bing search, could find your content. And you want that for a business. If you're a public business, you want as many people publicly to find you. McDonald's doesn't hide from people finding it. Nike doesn't hide. Whole Foods doesn't hide. Target doesn't hide. UCSD doesn't hide. All of these companies, these public entities, have a public account on Twitter, Facebook, etc. And most likely, you should too. Again, you need to decide how you're going to run your social media but I'm going to give suggestions and examples from the real world. In the real world, for the clients that I've worked for, having a public profile has always worked very well to reach more of an audience. So what's the point of this private messaging? This is like tech support. You don't want someone to be publicly asking an embarrassing question about your product or your brand or your service on Twitter, you want to have a private conversation where you can deal with it properly. Now, I do have to say, unfortunately, anything private on the internet doesn't stay private very long. So even if you're having a private conversation with someone here on Twitter regarding customer service about a faulty product that you're trying to fix, a user can easily take a photo of this screen and then share it to their public. So it's not completely private. 
Next up on the bar, we've got a Twitter search box. This unassuming box here is one of our most powerful weapons to find more followers. We'll talk about it in detail soon. This is different than the search box that you may have built into your web browser. Your web browser is going to search all over the internet, but search Twitter will only search in Twitter. If you first created your profile like me, you have an egg icon here you haven't hatched. Your account is brand new. Clicking that gives you a menu. So this is your profile and settings. We'll look at these screens also. And finally, you have a tweet button. You'll be able to tweet from any screen that you're at. You'll be able to post a new tweet, and we'll have an extensive lecture on that later. Continuing the anatomy tour, if I click on Profile and Settings and click View Profile, notice the address on the web browser changes to be My Current Profile. This is what people will see. If they go to your Twitter username account, your at name, they will see this, which as a beginner is not very much. I don't have a custom icon, so I'm just an egg. I don't have any color scheme set up. No one knows what this account is about. I haven't tweeted anything yet. One of the things we should do early on is to set up our profile properly. So if you visit your view profile screen and click edit profile, it will let you put a graphic at the top and a graphic as your avatar, as your icon here. For your profile photo, you want to upload a photo, which will be a square photo. So if your logo is rectangular, it's going to get cut off. You want a square version of your photo, of your logo. Your business account logo should go here. So for practice, if I upload Let's say I've got a photo, and notice it's only square-sized. So what size should I make this? The bigger the better, that way it's got the most quality and the most leeway for you to use. You want to put your company logo here, and hopefully readable enough and recognizable enough for people. So that will replace the egg icon and show that I'm not that I'm no longer a new account. One of the reasons you want to set up your profile properly early on is because you want to avoid the appearance of being a spammer, a fly-by-night organization that just created your account and you have nothing of importance to people. So adding a header photo also helps you with that. If I have a nice big graphic that I can display at the top there of my business, of my logo, of my products, that's going to be very good to show people I'm legitimate. I'm not a spammer. I will entice people to follow me if I look like a legitimate business. What also makes me legitimate is to fill in a biography, location, and website. My biography is a short paragraph. You will get notified once you run out of space. It'll start to mark as red. But a short paragraph about what your business is. If I've got a name like Victor's Bakery, it's pretty obvious what I'm about. But I could say San Diego Bakery. I have 160 characters in this biography to take advantage of keywords that can help me get found. Again, thinking about in terms about what can I do to benefit my business online, I could write something like San Diego Bakery specializing in healthy fare and kid-friendly treats. So if someone is searching Twitter or Google 
Bing, etc. for these keywords such as healthy snacks, healthy treats, kid-friendly cooking. If people are searching for these keywords, and my business biography here has these keywords, that could be one way that I get found by people. Then people can follow me on Twitter, and when I build followers, that can help me complete other actions. The whole point of any of these social networks to build followers is that's a captive audience. The more followers I have, the more people I have, potentially, that could buy my product, read my book, download my music, book me for a gig, visit me on Main Street. So more followers could equal more results. And by adding keywords in the biography and the tweets that we're going to publish later on, that could help me get found. So take advantage to fill this screen in, this biography, with words and phrases of what people may be searching for. But fill these in in terms of complete sentences. Don't just stuff keywords into this box. Don't just put in cookie, baking, uh, flour, healthy. Don't do that. Put in real keywords such as... We bake the best cookies in the South Bay with organic ingredients. I've put in the keywords organic, South Bay, kid-friendly, incomplete sentences. I want to do that on Twitter. I want to do that on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Snapchat, on Periscope, on Twitch, etc., etc. I want to fill a location, and it may give me a general city location. If I'm a bakery on Main Street, I want to select San Diego so that people can find my location on Main Street easier. If I'm an online business that ships all over the world, this may not be as valuable. I could put in something like 900 Otai Lakes Road. I can put in a real address. Or a general location. And then a website. So if you've got the website victorsbakery.com, you should put that. On my website is where I've got my shopping cart, where people can actually buy these cupcakes. They can't really buy it directly from the tweet. They're still going to go back to my website. I still need to drive traffic back to my website, most likely. So put your website address there. Here's an idea as well. Put a landing page from your website. A landing page is a screen on your website that you cannot get to through the main menu. I've got victorsbakery.com, and if you visit victorsbakery.com, I've got the About screen, the Contact screen, the Shop screen. You can get to those screens from the main menu. You cannot get to the Twitter offer screen from the main menu. You can only land upon that page from a certain direction. You can only get to the Twitter offer screen from Twitter. You can, o you can only get to the special offers screen from the email that you send to your followers, from the blog they read, from the coupon you put out on the community bulletin board. A landing page is a screen that you can only get to from a special link from not the main menu. So obviously that's out of the scope of our class, how do you create a landing page? But if you have, for example, a Twitter offer screen, I can add it to my link here. And the purpose of that is to reward my Twitter followers. Follow me on Twitter and you get things that other people don't get. 
I'm going to tweet links later on that people can only get to if they pay attention to me on Twitter. That's how you get one of the ways how you get people to follow you on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Share content that entices people to follow you. I can set a theme color. We've got a few basic colors built in. This is like the accent color of your site. Or if you know the color code of your, of your particular colors, you can add that in. You can add a birthday if you want. This will be private if you wish. For a business, not really that necessary. For a person, sure. So once I've filled in this screen, which I can edit at any point, I'm going to save. Continuing our, our anatomy tour, lists. This will make more sense as we use Twitter more. But we can organize accounts into lists. I can follow 10 accounts, but I can create a list called Celebrity Chefs and put in 40 celebrity chefs that I follow. I can put a list called Local Restaurants, and I can put local restaurant Twitter accounts into that list. So it's just a way to organize who you are following. Who you follow does get the notification that tells them you added them to a list. So if I add Carmen Aristegui to a list, she would get the notification that says I added her to the list. Next we have moments. You can create your own moments. Similar to how everyone sees moments in Twitter. And you can create your own moments. And you'll see all your moments there. We have help. So you want to browse that. Everything about Twitter is listed here. There are keyboard shortcuts that you may want to learn so that you can quickly reply to people, look at your lists, etc. And then settings. This is a very extensive screen that I will have a deeper lecture on in the next video. But to this point, you should browse the various Twitter screens to get acclimated to with what you have to work with. And then we're going to look at settings extensively next time. This has been Victor Campos.